Hey everyone, in today's video we're going over how to play striker in football. I'm going to give you a few ideas, some things to keep in mind, and demonstrate some things that you should be doing if you want to be an effective striker. What's up everyone, Dave here from Simply Soccer, where we're helping you to improve your game and stand out on the pitch, and we release weekly soccer tip training and technique videos all designed to help you do that. So if you like the content, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you also like this video. Let's get right into the footage where I'm gonna show you how you can be a more effective striker in football. We're gonna go over some of the ideas and I'm gonna give you some examples that you can use to improve yourself as a striker. To be an effective striker, you need to have good movement off the ball. Uh, what this is going to allow you to do is to create the space you need to score, to set up teammates, or to simply create space. So we're going to look at a couple of examples of what good movement can lead to. So we're going to look at this example of Harry Kane. I want you to watch what Harry Kane does when Danny Rose gets the ball on the wing over here. You can see the sudden movement he uses in order to create the space he needs, just a yard of space, so that he can get there before the defender. Now, he doesn't score this time, but he creates that chance by making that quick movement. We're going to watch it one more time. Look at the sudden movement he makes to get into that space. So here's a very simple run, which is pretty straightforward, where I check back to remain on side and then get a good through ball. Um, these kinds of runs you want to be making as well, and we'll cover some of the other runs that you want to be looking to make. So this is another really great play by Harry Kane and Deli Alley, but just pay attention to Harry Kane's movement after he plays Deli Alley the ball. It's fantastic movement. He kind of uh, loops in order to create some space and create that yard he needs so that when Deli Alley plays the very creative ball over the top, he has enough space to get a shot off, and it's a great emphatic finish as well. But I want you to notice something, and I'm going to have a, like a still frame of it. And look how many West Brom players are around Kane and Alley when he goes to to make this run without that intelligent run there's no goal that's going to happen here because there are six west brom players around him but even though there are that many defenders in front of him because of his intelligent movement and the good run they're still able to score from this situation so I can't go over every single run that you need to make as a striker in this video, but just know that you need to be basically in constant motion, looking for those spaces you can exploit, looking to get in behind and create that yard of space to get your shot away or set up a teammate. And essentially you're looking to just create a yard of space like you saw Harry Kane do a couple of times there in order to get your shot away or apply the finish. Now there's going to be different runs that you make where you're trying to relieve pressure or you're just trying to get in and on behind but you're not going to be on goal but you really want to be making tons of runs and you want to be timing them correctly and the more that you make and the more intelligent runs you make and the more intelligent your movement is the more chances you're going to get as a striker Another important thing a striker needs to be able to do is to create the space they need to shoot. Now usually, like we've already gone over, you only need to create a yard of space, and this can be done with intelligent runs and movement, but there are a couple of other ways to create that yard of space you need to get a shot away. When it comes to creating space, usually you only need to create that yard of space to get your shot off. This can be done by simply quickly putting the ball to the side and getting your shot off. Sometimes you can take a few more touches to create that space, and other times you'll want to use a complete skill move in order to create that yard of space to shoot. There are other ways to create space, like intelligent runs, like we've already covered, combination play, which you will need your teammates for, and in fact, I will link a video in the description going over some of the ways to practice creating space to shoot um, so that you can work on this area of your game. This may seem obvious, but one of the things you need to be not afraid of doing is shooting often when you are a striker. You look at some of the best goal scorers in the world, we can take a look at Harry Kane again, and you'll notice he backs himself when he shoots and he shoots very very often now i'm not saying shoot when you have a teammate in a great position but i'm saying don't be afraid to shoot i already showed you a goal of his um in the last segment where he shot from about 25 30 yards out and scored a really good goal you can't be afraid of shooting i just need to mention this um, if you are a striker do not be afraid of shooting often not only will that help you get better at shooting um, but you're someone who needs to score goals you're someone who is looked at to score goals, you'll be forgiven for taking shots. So make sure you're shooting very, very often. 
So of course we also have to go over finishing abilities. So now you know you need to have good movement so that you're making the right runs, so that you're getting more chances, that you need to be shooting often, and that you need to be creating that yard of space to get your shot off either through your runs, through a skill move, or other means. Now it's going to come down to how good is your finishing ability, how composed are you in front of net. <laughs> This is an area you should be focusing heavily on from both a physical and a mental standpoint. Make sure you are physically working on your finishing very, very often. I will actually put a link in the description of some drills that you can do to improve your finishing ability, but also make sure you're working on your mentality when it comes to goal scoring as well, because a lot of goal scoring isn't just having the physical skill to do it, a lot of it is your confidence and composure in front of net. Essentially, relaxing and not panicking when you get your chance. So make sure you're working on both of those things heavily because you want to be the player that your team can rely on when the game is on the line and the opportunity falls to you. You want to be that player where your teammates know if they put you in an on goal that you most likely are going to score. So keep working on your finishing until you get to this point and then keep working on it from there. Be practicing this over and over and over again so it's so a part of you that every time you get an opportunity it looks like you're going to score. This is one of the most important areas a striker can work on because obviously the main thing a striker needs to be doing is scoring the goals. So you want to make sure you're as good at this as possible so that you're scoring as many goals as possible when you create the opportunities or an opportunity comes your way. So I've called this next section the dirty work because not everything a striker does is glamorous. Yes, you know it's fun to score the goals and create the chances and beat players one-on-one, -on -one, but there is additional work that you're going to be required to do if you want to be an effective and well-rounded striker. And the first one we're going over is hold-up play. Now, some players are deliberately hold-up players, target men. This is a big part of their job, but again, not every uh, striker is going to be a target man. There are different types of strikers. However, even if you're a more diminutive striker who's not really asked to hold up um, the ball as much as, you know, a, a Olivia Giroud, for example, um, you're still at times going to need to hold the ball up. Now, this could be to just allow your team uh, to breathe for a second if they lump the ball up to you so you can hold it up so that people can get out the fence. Maybe you need to hold it up in the attack so that your teammates can catch up. Or maybe you just need to protect the ball or some other reason. Whatever the case, being able to hold the ball up to shield it and prevent your opposition from taking it from you is very, very important. Even better is if you can draw a foul um, by holding the ball up. You'll see strikers that are incredibly small still do this, although maybe not as prominently as maybe an Ibrahimovic or a Giroud, but you'll see them still do this and draw fouls, you know, spin their man sometimes, or hold it up so when their teammates can join in the attack or a few of their teammates can join in the attack. I just wanted to mention this one quickly. You need to make sure you're an outlet for your team, especially when they need to relieve pressure or lump the ball up to you. A great way to do this is make corner runs so that your team can put it towards the corner and you can chase after it. Another way to be an outlet is by having good hold up play and shielding the ball when they lump it up to you. Um, another way to be an outlet is to start counterattacks by making intelligent runs uh, when the counterattack is on, receiving the ball, and then waiting for your teammates to join the attack. But I just wanted to mention this one because it is something that you will need to do. Next should be one that's self-explanatory, but it's work ethic. Yeah, being a striker isn't just attacking and scoring goals. There is actually a defensive side to it, and there is a work ethic to it as well. You are not meant to be a lazy player. You want to be the most effective striker that you can possibly can. You want to have a really good work ethic. One of my uh, favorite things that I like for strikers to do is to defend from the front, meaning harassing the defense and not giving them any breathing room and forcing them into mistakes. You can see Luis Suarez do this all the time, and it was one of the, my most favorite things that he would do when he was playing in Liverpool is he would totally harass the defense, and you can actually see a few goals he scores because he closes down the defenders, forces them into a pass they don't want to make, steals it from them, and then scores. So it's very important that you do the same. Be an absolute pest to your opposition defense, and don't give them a moment to breathe. Be someone with an incredible work ethic. 
Almost every amazing striker or a really good striker has a bit of a selfish streak to them. Now, I'm not saying you have to be an idiot and not pass to your teammate when they're in a great position, but the best strikers in the world, you think of the Suarez's, the Ibrahimovic's, the Cavani's, the Falcao's in his prime, the Diego Costa's, they have a bit of a selfish streak to them when it comes to wanting to score and take shots and things of that nature. And this is something you actually need. It gives you a bit of an edge. Again, I'm not saying that you need to be a player that never passes or is only acting for themselves. You're being selfish because you know that you can make a difference and you can make an impact. You need that player who's willing to pull the trigger. You need that player who's willing to take risks and take chances. And in order to do that, you're going to have to be a little bit selfish. Next idea is composure and confidence in front of goal. Like I was saying earlier, it's not just the physical skill of finishing that you need to have. You need to be confident when you actually get your chance. If you're nervous in front of goal, if you get a goal scoring opportunity and you're having self doubt and you don't believe in yourself in that moment, chances are you're probably not gonna do what you need to do to score. Either you'll hit it right at the keeper, you'll try and smash it um, as hard as you can because you panic or you might just straight up miss delayed too long on the ball, take it too quickly, a bunch of things can happen. But when you remain calm and composed in front of goal, you always give yourself a much better chance of scoring. One of the things I like to say is every single time you have a chance, 100% believe that you are going to score. Now, although it's impossible that you will score every single chance you ever get in your life, it serves you in no way to think that you're going to miss. So every single time you get an opportunity, you want to reinforce the idea that you're going to score because this is going to increase your confidence and composure in front of net and actually make it more likely that you'll do what you need to do in order to score that goal. Final mindset I want to cover quickly is having the ability to make things happen or having the belief that you can make things happen. You need to back yourself and have confidence in your ability to take the game by the scruff of the neck and change the outcome. You need to become a match winner and a match winner's mentality is different than someone who doesn't believe that they can influence a match or be that player that comes up in the clutch moment to win. You think of all the great players in the world, they all believe in their ability to make things happen. They all believe in their ability to impact the match in a positive way and potentially win the match for their team. So you need to actually start by developing this mindset by realizing I can change this game in a positive way. I have the ability to make things happen. And when you combine this belief system with the hard work you'll put in to develop the skills you'll need to do this, you'll find that you start influencing matches much more. But I wanted to mention this because if you don't think you can influence a game, if you don't think you can change games, if you don't think that you can make things happen, then you won't make things happen. Question of the day for all of you strikers out there. Which one of these areas that we covered are you strongest at? And which one of these areas that we covered are you the weakest at? I need to probably put a little more work into. Let me know down in the comments. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching the video. Please like this video and share it with a friend. And remember to subscribe to Simply Soccer if you haven't already, as we release videos every week designed to help you improve as a player. I will have two videos come across the screen that are going to help Help you as a striker even more. They're going to be striker specific videos so you can continue learning and applying the advice in those videos to become a more complete striker. All right guys, once again, thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you in the next video.